Hey, Coach, can you hear us? I can hear you. Great. Well, welcome, everybody, to Manny Diaz's weekly press conference. The Hurricanes are coming off a win over Florida State that ran their record to 3-0 and and moved them to eighth in both the AP and the coaches poll. Miami is off this Saturday, but will return to action the following Saturday, October 10th, at Clemson, which was announced today as a 7.30 kickoff on ABC. We'll uh, start with an opening question, uh, opening statement sorry, from Coach Diaz, and then we'll move to questions. Coach, take it away. Yeah, uh, thank you, Carter. Watching the film um, of the Florida State game, again, just very impressed with our effort. Uh, I thought we, we were relentless all night. Um, as I suggested after the game Saturday evening, it was really the critical situations that made the score look the way that it did. Um, possession downs and red zone. Uh, we were dominant in possession downs. Um, they couldn't get us off the field on third down. And, and then if we had some third and long, sometimes we were smart, giving us some fourth down and manageables in a part of the field where we could go for it. And, um, and that was running the ball, throwing the ball, uh, different guys making plays, just a, t a total team effort on, on the possession downs. And then red zone. Offensively, we got in the red zone six times. Uh, we scored five touchdowns. The only field goal was right before half, uh, really when we ran out of time. And then they got in our red zone four times and only came away with 10 points, two empty possessions. And I thought the holding them to the field goal on the first drive was so important. Um, and that's, you know, and, that, and that's winning football on both sides. And, and so, again, proud of our guys. We gave uh, the team off yesterday other than a COVID test and checking into treatment. And uh, this morning we came in and, and reviewed the film and, um, and uh, got a lift, put all that behind us. And, um, you know, for, for three weeks into the season, we, we are about as healthy as you can be. Obviously, there's some bumps and bruises uh, along the way that this week will be valuable to, to get our guys rested up into the, um, into the next sort of little three-game run in our schedule for our, our following bye. And uh, with that, I'll open up for questions. Uh, great. Thanks, Coach. We will start with David Ferronis from the Sun Sentinel. David, go ahead. Hey, Coach, uh, in a game where you were able to get so many true freshmen uh, into the game uh, late in the fourth quarter and all, uh, who, who really impressed you uh, reviewing film and, uh, you know, off that uh, off that performance? Uh, let's see. It, it was it was great to get some guys in there. You know, you talk about um, Chance Williams uh, being able to get in there. Um, you know, obviously, you know, we got Elijah Roberts in there. Uh, Quinn Williams made a play down there in the red zone. Um, Isaiah Dunson and Brian Balaam got a lot of reps in the secondary, which is really important for them. Jalen Harrell had a nice tackle. I think we had 30 guys had a tackle or assist in the game, which I don't know if I've ever heard of that before. That's really quite a remarkable stat. Um, and even offensively getting Jalen Rivers, a, um, a couple at bats. So just good to get all of our young guys. And then, and then again, though, Mike Redding in the first half makes a, you know, tightly contested catch on one-to-one -one man coverage. Uh, like on a third and five. So it was good to see all of our freshmen out there contributing. Great. Next, we'll go to Manny Navarro from The Athletic. Manny, go ahead. Hey, man, I got two kind of how do you make the donuts question. Uh, first one is um, the, the offense, you know, uh, lining up quickly and running the next play. How much of that is, is you know, do you give them maybe two or three plays, um, you know, at the start of the drive where, you know, it's, it's sort of like pre-planned, hey, we're going to we're going to run this right after this play. Or how does that sort of work with you guys, uh, you know, to get lined up so quickly and run the play? No, every play lives in its own little planet. So the, the guys just have to do a phenomenal job of once the play ends of letting that play go, um, getting the signal, getting lined up as fast as they can. And, and then as soon as we're ready to go, uh, run it. And then the second one, um, you know, analytics, you've talked about that before. I know you study a bunch of numbers. Um, I'm curious as to like, you know, do you guys sign up for a bunch of these uh, services like Pro Football Focus and Football Outsiders, all that kind of stuff? And, and I guess who kind of organizes all that th that analytical research for you guys? Uh, we don't have one person per se that that um, that organizes it. We don't sort of have a, a, a data coordinator, uh, but we do subscribe to a couple different services, um, different than sometimes the way that they present. Um, I guess to the public. You know, I mean, in some ways it helps us with in terms of scouting film. Uh, obviously, we use a lot of data uh, involved in that. We do data. You know, we subscribe to a service that helps in terms of, you know, game day decision making, understanding um, down distance management, timeout management, um, all those type of things. So, yeah, I mean, anyone who's got numbers, we usually try to look at, um, you know, what we can do to help us. And in addition to the things we do on the inside, just in terms of our scouting of, of, of ourselves and our opposition. Thanks. Okay, next up, we'll go to David Lake from 24-7. David, go ahead. 
Yeah, Coach, I wanted to get your take on the idea of just identity, I guess, in general, and, and how important it is, you know, either side, but particularly this season with offense. Do you feel like it's important for an offense to have an identity? Um, you know, it, it seems like each week the offense is getting more and more confident, and it seems like they, they are kind of growing into an identity. Again, I understand it's only been three games, but, um, you know, do you, do you think that's fair to say that this year's offense is kind of establishing an identity? Absolutely. And, and, and you can say that after three games, um, you know, I thought the, the first game defensively in 2016 against FAMU, we were playing FAMU, but I thought we established an identity of what we were trying to see ourselves as defensively. So, I mean, obviously playing fast and playing physical is, is what we want to do. And, um, and I think that's why that UAB, UAB game was very important in terms of how fast and how physical that we could play. Um, and now, to your point, I do think we're getting more confidence, not just in terms of having results that make us feel better about ourselves, but just from a conditioning level, you know, and understanding you, got, you, have, to, you have to be able to believe that you can push yourself through some things uh, offensively to, to be as relentless as we are. And ultimately what you're doing is you're taking the defense to a place of discomfort that they're not used to. So I think our guys are getting a better hang of it. And, you know, and I thought they saw it Saturday night um, that you get the ability. And, we, we, and especially when we can stay on the field, and that's as the efficiency grows. I mean, a 13-play drive, I think we had an 18-play drive. Um, that's a lot of body blows that you're landing uh, to that opposition. So, um, like you said, I mean, it's, it's early, but in terms of, of, of at least seeing what it's supposed to look like, I think we've accomplished that. We'll uh, stick with 24-7 sports and next go to Gabby Urutia. Gabby, go ahead. Hey, man. So, obviously, like, I would go to the point where you're down the road recruiting and, and things like that. So, I mean, obviously, you guys can't do that. So, is there anything special you guys have planned with, with Zooms or anything just in recruiting in general that you guys have kind of planned out just since you guys can't get out anywhere? Yeah, if, I, if I heard your question right, recruiting has been what it's been – really since early on in, in the, in the pandemic, it's just, it's all been um, through digital communication, you know, talk to you on the phone, um, Zooms, FaceTimes, text message, all those type of things. So it's been a different year because there's different, um, you know, like for example, you used to have one phone call a week and, and some of those things have gone away. Obviously you can't have the unofficial visit or the official visit right now, but, uh, but as a staff, we're still making daily connections with, um, with, you know, all of our targets. Uh, next, we'll go to Gary Foreman with Kingsport. Gary, go ahead. All right, well, uh, we'll wait on Gary. David Wilson from the Miami Herald. Do you have a question for Coach Diaz? Hey, Manny. Um, you, you touched on it a little bit um, at the top, talking about the freshmen, but, um, you know, just to have Cheney, Knighton, and you, and you mentioned Mike Redding had a big catch in the first. Uh, quarter obviously had a touchdown later in the game too. Um, this freshman class does seem pretty far along pretty quickly, um, and especially given the fact that they did not have a traditional spring. Um, I don't know. Is it something you think that's different about this class, or, or maybe different about the leadership in the in the last couple of years that is kind of letting you guys really lean pretty heavily on a, on a bunch of true freshmen on offense? I think both. Th th this class has something to it. I feel like I've been saying that, and and. Uh... You want to be true as the games come, but but it's turning out to be true. And, um, you know, we still have, you know, Dave Philly still does this, you know, 545 developmental lift uh, with all the new guys. And you can just really tell how they are when they work when no one's watching. I mean, you can see the talent on the field, but really who you are, you know, gets tested in that weight room every week. And, you know, all the reports come back, you know, these guys are just different and they want to work. They, they want to be great. I, you know, I, I we saw that when they stuck with us you know, during some of the, the, the dark moments we had last fall. And as I've gotten here, I, I, they have they have been who we thought they were. And it's been fun to watch those guys develop and grow. And, and that's what it's all about, right? It's just about adding like-minded people to your program that fit the culture of what you want to build. And, um, and, then, and then I do think they're benefiting from better, older leadership than what we've had in the past. So um, it's been fun to watch those guys. Those guys are really, uh, they're really fun to be around. Okay, we're going to try Gary Furman again. Gary, you there? Uh, yeah, sorry about that, Carter. The mic didn't unmute. Um, Manny, you had the opportunity in 2017 to 
see up close exactly what going to play Clemson means with the, their program being where it is right now. Um, do you, you've accomplished so much in these last nine months. Do you feel, you know, better equipped? Uh, do, you, do you feel that you're going up there from, from a position of strength? And, and you know, just, just what's the mental approach to this game? Well, we're still, I mean, we're still a ways out in terms of even getting them scouted and, and, and seeing who they really are. Um, obviously, that night in Charlotte was, wasn't one of our best nights. It, it, it felt like they were just playing a game and we were playing the occasion. Um, just You could just tell by the way we were reacting in the first, you know, seven to eight minutes of the game. And, and so I think that's part of it. That's Look, they, they have earned the right to be where they are right now, and they earned it by – getting themselves into some of these type of games and losing them and learning from it and, and, and passing that knowledge down from class to class. Um, so there's, there's something to be said about that, but um, you know, we can talk more about them, you know, next week as we really get into studying them. But, uh, but I think that's ultimately what you're in our league. We know that we're all measuring ourselves by, by how we stack up against the, those guys. Great. Next we'll go to Tom D'Angelo with the Palm beach post. Tom, go ahead. Hey, Manny, um, you mentioned after the game Saturday about the biggest opponent this week uh, before before Clemson becomes your opponent next week. How much more? I mean, I know you, you're you very, very proud and you've said a lot about how, how well these guys have done getting through this and getting to this point. How much more is it? I don't know. More, I don't know if concern is the right word, but just a little more anxiety or concern or just having to just uh, be more aware because it's kind of a week where, you know, they're away for football a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, it's look, we, we, we all love routine and we all love structure and, and, uh, and we'll still have a lot of that this week, but there will be a little bit more idle time. And, um, and then not to mention, by the way, if you look at what's where the state's going, the numbers are going down, but we're, we're, we're easing restrictions too, right? And no one really knows how that's going to, you know, how that's going to go. What we told our team today is, you know, we've been at this, since June 15 and December 5th is basically just over nine and a half weeks away, you know, and for nine and a half weeks, that's kind of the, the story, no matter what it looks like right now, the story is going to be written over the nine and a half weeks. And um, that will determine what happens next after that day. And man, it seems like it's worth it for nine and a half weeks, right? Cause we've made it, we've made the right decisions for a much longer period of time. If you think about it. So for nine and a half weeks, you know, can we continue to control what we can control and make the proper decisions when we're not in this building? And, uh, but you know, I, I, at the end of the day, it comes down to trust and I, I, I trust our guys to do right and, uh, and to protect the team. And, and if I could one more, you, you, we heard, you know, Carter said at the start, you're number eight. There's a lot. You're, you're, I think you're for the third week out of four, you're going to be well, forever. You're going to be on national TV, seven thirty ABC again. How do you keep them grounded? Well, you focus on what's real and you focus on our tape, which is, you know, th there are plenty of things uh, that we have to get much, much better at, regardless of whether we're playing Clemson or, or anybody else. We're, we're probably going into a run the next three games of playing. There's a lot of really good defensive coaches in this league, but the next three, you know, when you go Venables, Narduzzi and um, um, Virginia with Mendenhall, I mean, those are three guys that know how to build a defense. So just, just the challenges that are ahead, you can't sit there and, 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 you know, we didn't sit around and say we're going to be defined by what happened to our past a year ago. Well, we can't sit around and say we're going to be defined by our past, by what's happened the last three weeks. And, and we've done a good job of that in our film study. We know um, the things that we've got to improve on while we're winning. And that's really what good teams do. They don't wait for the, 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 the pain of defeat to be the motivation to try to correct some mistakes. Thank you. Are you watching the NBA Finals? How <laughs> can of course, man. How can, how, how can, how can you not? <laughs> Thanks. Okay, we got time for one last question, and we'll go to Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. Ralph, go ahead. Hey, Manny. Um, I got a question more along the lines of uh, um, COVID protocols, and that is if you have a kid, kid, if you have a player who's in quarantine at any point, maybe maybe even during the summer or, or, or workouts, um, what can you do to keep help that kid stay in shape? In other words, as opposed, you know, you, you can't necessarily have them around the team, but do you guys have a plan for, okay, if we end up with a few kids in quarantine, how do we keep them working? So when they do come back in 14 days, they're, they're not, 
you know, they haven't just been sitting on the couch. And I, I assume you're saying in quarantine for as they're in contact tracing. Yeah, we're right. Not, 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 not that they've um, tested positive, but they're just through contact tracing. Yeah. That's really one of the most difficult things there is because they are really uh, by the, the rules set forth by the CDC. Um, they're supposed to stay in isolation, you know, in wherever they live. So there's not a whole bunch of things that we can do in terms of trying to, to control that and, 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 and give them any, some type of routine. Um, some of the guys that we've had, and, and by the way, just, you know, the rules on that have changed since the summer, the recommendations um, have changed on that since the summer. So the 14 days behave a little bit differently now uh, than they did back in July and maybe even early August. So not a whole lot you can do, you know, and, and I think that makes it difficult on those guys because it's tough to get a guy, you know, after 14 days and just say, okay, good, you're ready to go back into a football game from a conditioning level. And so you, it's just something, it's a part of what we have to monitor and, and the adjustments we have to make, you know, given 2020. Thanks, Manny. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, coach. Enjoy the rest of your Monday and we'll be in touch later this week. Okay. Thank you all.